Okay. Alright, I've cut a piece 12 inches long, and, and the motor is going to sit on this piece. It's going to sit on just like this, and this is going to be the mountain block that's going to screw down onto my housing. Alright, well, I'm, fit, I'm about to put a rabbit on here, so I need to find my mark right there. And all I'm going to do is just start. I'm just going to rabbit this out. glued and screwed there. Yes, I like that a lot. Okay, excellent. All right, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to glue and screw this. I put screws in from. I put screws in from this side, and from this side. All right. Okay, this is the way. This is the way it's going to glue up. Okay, so I'm going to. I'm just going to go ahead and put glue on this rabbit here. I can, there we go. Clean off my, my glue bo bottle. Put glue in here. And glue on this surface really well. And glue on this surface really good. I have to put more glue. That's all in grain right there. It's already trying to soak in. Uh, glue and in grain, it takes more glue. Just for the simple reason that it soaks it in. It soaks in more of it. And if it soaks in all the glue, then you have a very weak joint. But there we go. All right now, that's going to stand just like this. Just like that. And I will shoot some screws in there. And I've got two and a half inch screws. I'm going to shoot in from the top. And then I'm going to put two in this, this direction also. Alright. Well, that's good. I'm ready to go. And the way that's going to do is that's going to mount right here. And the motor is going to mount on the it right here. Lined up with the pulleys lined up. And I'll have to measure that. But that's what I'm going to do. I'll put, I'll put bolts in. You know, I can put it anywhere around here I want to, but uh, I, I may end up putting it off this corner over here. Or maybe, I may put it back here. Because I can bolt it there. Yeah, I think I may end up doing that. Alright. Okay, well I'll be back in just a minute. i got to figure out where I'm going to mount this thing. Okay, well. I measured the height to the center of this pulley at two and three quarter inches. Okay. And I've come down and I've marked here two and three quarter. So just to get me in general lined up, that's what that's the way I've done just to get lined up. So that pulley will be right about here. So what I want to do, and I can actually loosen this pulley and move it in and out a little bit if I need to. And uh, I'll have a little bit of space between these lag screws also. But I'm going to go ahead and mark for my lag screws. And then I'm going to drill those out. If you see here. The way I'm going to do this is 
uh, just got a smaller drill bit than what my lag screw is. If you can see the threads out from around it, but you don't see the shaft, then it's about the right size. So, I'm going to drill that out right quick. Right. Now all I gotta do, got washers. There. A washer. And start mounting the motor. And start putting these in the holes. I'll try to get it started with my fingers if I can get in there. Right. And I'm going to have to tighten all these with a wrench. That's going to take a while. But I'll be back once I get once I get those in and, and the motor tightened down. Okay. I thought I was recording a minute ago. Anyway, I put a, a little support block up under the bottom, up under this lip here. It's just a two by five and a half inches wide. Alrighty, buddy. Let's give her a spin. See how she does. joke that ain't no joke that is just mean that thing right there is gonna pull dust out of here like nobody's this business spot right here is extremely dangerous though in this area right here so I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to get my filter box built and then uh, and then I'll I'll go at it from there all right I'll be back uh, uh, once I start getting ready to do that what I'm going to use is my old filter from this. The whole bottom section is the filter box. And I, and I can use that to keep from having to uh, rebuild a whole other one. Alright, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, well, this is my filter box. And uh, instead of building a brand new one, I just used the one off of my old, uh, well, basically it was an ambient air cleaner. I just took it off of there. And uh, so I'll be taking that down and uh, I won't be using it anymore. But it'll give me another motor. <laughs> All right, let me show you what I've done. Anyway, uh, I put cleats in to match the size of filters. My filters are 20 by 20 by one inch. Okay, so uh, I've, I want to stack filters, so I put a two inch gap here, all the way around, and put new more cleats. Okay, <clears throat> that that will hold both filters at the same time. They're stacked directly on top of each other. Okay, 
and they go in just like this. They just slide in. And that's two of them. If they just slide in. And sometimes they get caught back there at the very back. There we go. That got it. All right. So they just slide in. Okay. And then I have a little baffle board that I made. And what this is going to do is it's going to sit on top of the cleats that I just put in. It's going to slide in. And what that's going to do is when the air comes in the center, it'll kind of distribute the air out more evenly over the filter. I don't know if it's going to work or not. It's just an idea that I had. Uh, it's just kind of a baffle. Slow the air down uh, from coming in the center so much and, and more or less distributes the air all the way around. And then last but not least is the cover. And the cover goes on just like this. And there's a door here that will raise up and I can pull my filters out. I can take my baffle out or, or whatever. But it's got a six inch port or a six inch, uh, it's got a six inch hole in the middle here. So I can take my flange or whatever and uh, actually this is going to be mounted directly on top of my cyclone separator of the cyclone part this will this will actually sit on top of that uh, there's not going I'm not going to have a pipe going into it well yes I probably will because I do want to reach down in there a little bit so what I want to do is I'll make a flange and uh, and I'll probably you know just turn it on the lathe It'll be a, a four inch flange uh, because I have four inch pipe and it, it'll, it'll reduce down from this six inch down to a four inch and it'll reach a couple of inches down into the cyclone. And uh, well, got, got my clutch set on my drill. Let me go ahead and... Uh, stick a couple of these screws back in well okay I've got the impeller and fan built and they're in this section here the uh, housing the motor is back here turning a pulley over here the pulley is uh, it's two and a quarter inch pulley and uh, which reduces the, the motor speed down. This motor is 3400 RPM, 3450 RPM. I may even go slower because, buddy, that thing is really getting it uh, a, a lot faster than what I really expected. I really wanted to try to get it around 1700, but to do that, I need a three inch pulley. So uh, we'll see about all of that anyway. Okay, well, uh, the air comes in here, it goes through through my little baffle, through my filters, and then it blows out right here. Okay, now my cyclone, which is going to start like this, the cyclone will be like right here, and, and there will be a pipe that will come out a couple of inches down into there. Okay. And then my collector will be on the very bottom. But let's see. This plywood's got a lot of, I don't know if it'll hold a seal with just like this or not. But I'm just going to try a little experiment. And uh, just see how this thing does. Because now it's actually ready for the cyclone. All I have to do now is build it. I've got... A lot of it already in mind.
them pellers balanced out really well. Uh, it starts out with a little bit of vibration, but then it smooths right out. And uh, anyway, if I need to change my filters, right there they are. So, so here we go. All right, let's get started on this cyclone. that cut out. I'll just cut that out with my jigsaw. Okay, and I will silicone around all this, of course. This is beginning to look like what I'm wanting. Alright, that's gone. Okay, we are looking in pretty good shape here. Maybe. Got a quarter inch all the way around my circle. And all I did, I cut off the end of the pipe where the end slips in here. And that, that'll allow this to stick out and I can bring my other pipe right into the end and uh, it should just snap right in or slide right in anyway. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna start cutting this out. Get my Since I don't have a four inch Forstner bit or anything, actually this is an inch and uh, three sixteenths, or four inches and three sixteenths, because it has to slip over that, over the outside diameter. The inside diameter of this is four inches, the outside diameter is a four and three sixteenths. Alright, well I'm going to cut this out on the, uh, I'm just going to cut out this circle on the, uh, Uh, scroll saw. All right, well, I'll be back. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out, and I'll be back once I get that done. Alright, well, 
thought I was recording again but all I've done is I've glued this up from uh, I just cut all I did was I cut this out I, I cut that out actually on the scroll saw or on the band saw and uh, and then I cut two pieces exactly the same size as one side of this next once this sets up just a little bit I'm gonna put the other two sides on and I'll, I'm just looking this will be a long channel I know but what I'm looking for is something I'll be able to get along that diameter uh, so it can shoot into the into the cyclone really nice and smoothly all right I'll be back once this gets dried up all right well we're getting down here to having this thing built just gluing the sides on now Now I just need to find the angle of the taper. And the way I'm going to do that is just with my T-bevel. I'll just run it up here. Tighten it down. And that angle is the taper of that drum. Or of that trash can. So now I'm going to start building a little baffle down in the bottom of that thing to hopefully slow down the swirl a little bit all right let me get my saw set up okay well I've got two pieces of mahogany ripped down and the only reason I'm using mahogany is because it was already a quarter inch thick is and that's uh, that's the thickness that I wanted my my th my, uh, my baffle so <clears throat> I've got to cut that taper on the baffle. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I've already measured the bottom, it's 11 inches. So I need 11 inches on the short side of, of, my, of my baffle. So anyway, these have been, already been ripped to four inches. Okay, now I've got both pieces are cut with the angles, with the angles on it, it's 11 inches across. Now what I'm going to do is I need to cut a slot, about a quarter inch slot up the middle of each one. I need to cut the top of one and the bottom of the other. So what I've done is I've just marked the centers and so I can line them up and I'm going to cut them at the same time. I've got both centers right there. I'm going to cut on one side and I'm going to cut on the other side. Let me make sure that's wide enough. Yep, if I take that out, I should be in really good shape. Alright, let's do this. Hold them together nice and, nice and tight.
my baffle and it'll just stick straight down into my can or into my thing. Okay. And this is what I've got. Okay. And what I'm thinking is as this air is circulating around in here and everything's going to the bottom, that those baffles are going to stop that circulation. It, or at least it'll slow it down a lot because it's four inches tall and it covers the whole bottom. So anyway, that's the theory behind that. Don't know if it'll work or not. Going to try it. All right. Well, the top of my cyclone is a 13 and a half inch diameter. So in order to get my, my pipe coming in at the, at the right uh, angle, and all, I had to use that diameter and basically I cut a pattern out of a piece of uh, quarter inch plywood and here's my box and I'll use that diameter I made my marks about an inch out and I just marked that and that, get, that gives me the the right diameter for that now <clears throat> what I've got to do is go to the bandsaw and I uh, can't get confused here because you got a, a one side that has to be shorter than the other and one side has to be longer than the other. So I've got my bandsaw set up for five degrees, which is the same as that taper, supposedly. And uh, I'm going to go cut this out. This side right here has to go into the blade first because it's on the top side which is the largest diameter right here and the bottom side down here is the short side so I, all I have to do is make sure that this side hits my blade first all right yeah maybe I'm right Okay, well, let's see. Bye, golly. Yes, sir. I believe that's going to work out. Just so anyway, fine. I'm just going to mark this off in the lighted area. And that's, in general, in general, what I'm going to be cutting out. So I'm going to, I'm probably just going to use a Dremel tool to cut that with, uh, with a little rotary cutter. And I'm going to, then I'll get in there and clean it out a little bit better later. All right, I'm going to get my Dremel out. Okay, well, there's there's my hole. I'm just getting ready to uh, mount this uh, thing on there, or the nozzle, or whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure what to call it, but uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start out first of all. I'm going to silicone all around this thing. Get a little bit of silicone in here. I'll smooth that out with my fingers.
All right. I'll just kind of flush trim that stuff up around that nozzle and be in good shape. 